Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to address you at the opening of the EuroHPC Summit Week. I'm grateful to the organizers and in particular to Jensi and Preis for all the efforts to prepare such a big gathering under the present circumstances. Since 2018, supercomputing has been one of the key European priorities and it's now part of the EU strategy for digital transformation, that is, the digital decade. Supercomputers are constantly at work in all critical areas of modern society. They played an instrumental role in accelerating the time to develop solutions in the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of you may have participated in the common activities on this subject, including, for example, with the United States, and I would like to warmly thank Praise for enabling such collaboration. The war in Ukraine further highlights the need for high-performance computing, for example, in the context of the cybersecurity and cyber war we are living today. Europe's defense may also count on our best supercomputing resources to increase national and the Union's security. Of course, we all hope this will not be necessary. We have been working with you for many years to build now a solid European strategy that will help us become a leading supercomputing power to increase our digital sovereignty. In these critical times for Europe and for the whole world, we can witness now how important this is. It is now evident that the EuroHPC joint undertaking, which we have launched with all the member states almost four years ago, was the right model for setting up the ambitious goals for the Union and achieving them. And we are about to finalize our very first major goal that we set all together. Invest around 750 million euros to acquire and deploy eight top supercomputers. They will constitute world-class infrastructure accessible throughout Europe for public and private users. And they will provide almost one exaflop of computing power, increasing by at least a factor of four, if it is not five, the available computing power of the Union. Our second major goal was to enable all member states to profit from this advanced infrastructure. Therefore, we have invested altogether in HPC competence centers, one each in each member state, so that they can promote innovative HPC applications, facilitate access to the infrastructure, and address shortages of skills and technical expertise. And we have not worked them to foster innovations, for example, by exchanging and promoting best practices or by supporting the sharing of innovative applications and tools for users and in particular for our SMEs. We have also started collectively investing in strengthening HPC education, knowledge and skills and attracting talent. Not long ago, we launched the first European master degree in high performance computing and we are now supporting short term trainings, job placements and upskilling. A third major goal was to reinforce our HPC technology capabilities, both in core technologies and in, ad and in advanced applications. For example, we have invested over 150 million euros so far in spearheading low processor developments, notably through the European Processor Initiative, and more recently through pilot projects that support transition towards exascale technologies. The new Euro HPC launched its activities last August. It has now a bold mandate not only to continue and strengthen its present activities, but to extend them to quantum computing and to invest in the first European supercomputers that will be built, hopefully, with European processor technologies. This new EuroHPC will have a budget of uh, around 7 billion euros until the end of 2027, including both public and private contributions. This budget will permit to acquire several additional top 100 supercomputers, including two exascale supercomputers, of which at least one with EU technology, and one post-exascale supercomputer. In the second half of 2022 of this year, we will proceed to the acquisition of the first exascale supercomputer 
and hopefully at least of another three to four uh, petascale supercomputers. We will also invest in a few pilot quantum computers to be installed in our supercomputing centers in late 2023 or early 2024. They would either function as accelerators of the classical supercomputers or as standalone machines. We have another major objective then, which is to interconnect and federate all these high performance computing and quantum computers via ultra high speed secure networks. We would like to create the world's most powerful distributed computing network to the benefit of our economy and our society. This network may also connect the European data spaces that we are building in several sectors, such as mobility, energy, health, agriculture or smart cities. These would be accessible through cloud-based services to public and private users everywhere in Europe. Such interconnected digital facilities will surely stimulate large HPC and AI applications, putting value in the wealth of data that will be available via the Union's data spaces. Concrete examples of ambitious applications we are targeting here include the launch of a digital twin of the human body or the continuation of our work on destination Earth that will provide Europe with high-precision digital models and simulation capabilities related to our planet. We will soon renew the call for HPC centers of excellence in order to prepare for applications exploiting exascale capacities of our new EuroHPC supercomputers. Last but not least, we will continue investing in the next generation of high-end computing technologies and in the European Processor Initiative. We expect in the two uh, next years, in the next two years, to see the first European HPC processor and soon after its integration in a European exascale machine. We are also uh, planning investments in new emerging computing architectures and in high-end low-power processors, leveraging our current strengths in open hardware such as the RISC-V. This is a fundamental step towards European supply of components and technologies in this critical domain, while at the same time addressing the need to reduce the energy consumption of our supercomputers. These EuroHPC projects in processor technologies will be fostered by the European CHIPS Act that we adopted just five weeks ago. This is a prominent political initiative that aims at creating a state-of-the-art European semiconductor ecosystem and assuring the security and the resilience of our supply chains. We need to develop new markets for European technology to meet the digital decade target of doubling our current global market share in semiconductors to 20% from the 8-9% that is today. This is an absolute necessity. We want to be able to manufacture in Europe processors covering the whole computing spectrum and reduce our dependency on other regions of the world. This is to cover also the whole demand area, from the high end to the embedded devices, to quantum chips, cloud and edge computing, and a wide range of application domains. The European Chips Act provides the frame for all processor initiatives in Europe. EuroHPC will work hand in hand with the new chips joint undertaking, which is currently known as the Key Digital Technology Joint Undertaking, to implement its plans for HPC processors. Our aspirations in supercomputing, in processors and semiconductor technologies are also underpinned by the National Resilience and Recovery Plans. These already foresee massive member state investments in all these technologies. We have also foreseen to create synergies and co-investment frameworks between the Union, the RRF plans and the national or other regional resources available to the Member States. I trust that you all share these ambitions for a digital sovereign Europe and that you will convey them to your national stakeholders and authorities. I wish you a very fruitful event and lots of success in working for a world-leading HPC ecosystem which will contribute to a stronger and hopefully more prosperous European Union. Thank you very much.